So then basically, what are the key features of Article 2? We just looked at the definitions earlier, right? It is applicable on taxes on income and capital, right? Second, these taxes on income and capital may be imposed on behalf of a contracting state. Contracting state means the country itself its political subdivision or a local authority doesn't matter as long as these are taxes on income and capital these are covered by the treaty and the manner in which they are levied is not material whether you have to pay them directly whether the person who's making the payment to you deducts it by way of a withholding tax or a TDS that is immaterial again which all taxes are covered the taxes on income any additional tax surcharge of course you need to find a mention for that in the treaty surtax like we saw in the India US treaty it excludes indirect taxes like VAT service tax sales tax etc and R&D cess is generally not covered as we saw in the case of India Netherlands treaty where the protocol specifically provides that R&D cess shall not be covered by article 2 now one of the question which comes up is that what happens if a state tax is not specifically covered in article 2. So if you recall when we saw the India US treaty it said federal income tax. Right? But in US you may also have state taxes. If this is not mentioned would you get the benefit of this? Specifically in the context of India-US treaty, the judiciary seems to be divided on this issue. They've held that in some cases these should be covered whereas the others have denied it. We're going to discuss this aspect in greater details when we go to the relevant articles in the context of which these decisions are given. With that we end article 2.1. Now we are going to look at article 2.2 to understand what is taxes on income and taxes on capital.